coming to you live from Worldwide Math Headquarters. Pre-Calculus Math 11. Dance. 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 Today, Section 3.2. Quadratic Functions in Standard Form. Well, we've explored the idea of the vertex form for a quadratic equation, which is that y equals a x minus p squared plus q. But today we want to consider the more general or standard form of a quadratic equation. That is, y equals a x squared plus b x plus c, where a, b, and c are all elements of the set of real numbers. Now apart from x and y, and the exponent of 2, Really, the only other thing in common between these two forms is the coefficient of a. And it's no accident that we use the value of a. In fact, in the standard form, it gives us the same information as in vertex form. Namely, the shape of the parabola and the direction of opening. Now the value b indirectly influences the horizontal location of the parabola, and c is the y-intercept. Now obviously, if x is equal to 0, then we just have y is equal to c, which gives us the y-intercept. Based off of this information, we can get a good idea of what the graph of a parabola looks like. But let's examine specifically how we can transform the vertex form into the standard form. So to transform the vertex form into the standard form, what I'm going to do is begin by expanding the bracket that says x minus p squared. This, of course, gives us x squared minus 2px plus p squared, which has to be multiplied by a, and then have q added. This gives me y equals a x squared minus 2apx plus ap squared plus q. And if we compare this to the standard form, y equals a x squared plus bx plus c, we can see that b is essentially just equal to negative 2ap, and c is equal to ap squared plus q. Going a step further with this, if we isolate p, p then must be equal to negative b over 2a, and q must equal c minus ap squared. So since we know that the coordinates of the vertex are always at p comma q, we could also say that based off of the standard form, the vertex is at negative b over 2a, comma, c minus ap squared, the values of p and q. For example, given the equation y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 10 and its graph below, identify the following information. Well, I think direction of opening is fairly easy given the graph, and given the positive a value, we know that this is opening up. And the coordinates of the vertex appear to be located right down here at negative 3 and, what is this, negative 8. Don't worry about questions where we're using the graph. The location of the vertex will be at a fairly obvious cross-section sort of point. It's not going to be located at negative 2.9 on the x-axis and negative 7.87 or something crazy like that on the, on the y-axis. If I'm giving you a graph and I'm asking for values, you can read them off fairly easily. We will be learning techniques for solving all of these things algebraically, but when you've got a graph, you can probably read it off accurately. Now, knowing the vertex and the direction of opening obviously tells me that we have a minimum value, and that the minimum is y equals negative 8, and that this only happens when x is negative 3. Of course, we also have the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. And the x-intercepts now. Well, I can see one of them here at negative 5 and the other here at negative 1. So x equals negative 5 and negative 1. The y-intercept I can see crossing right up here. I've also got the c-value right there on the equation. The y-intercept is y equals 10. The domain, as we stated previously, is the set of all x values such that x is an element of the set of real numbers, and the range is the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 8 
and is once again an element of the set of real numbers. And on to another example now. Chris the Cattle Rancher has 250 meters of fencing available to build a rectangular corral. He only needs to fence in three sides of the corral as one of the sides is going to go against an existing section of fencing. Write a quadratic function that represents the area of the corral and explain what the different points on the resulting parabola represent. Well the best place to start here is maybe with a little diagram. So if we've got the existing section of fencing here and Chris is going to build a rectangular section off the side of it, something like this. We want to write a quadratic equation that represents the area. And of course we know that area for a rectangle is equal to length times width. So I'm going to call this here the length and these two sections the width. The other thing that we know is that he's got 250 meters of fencing material. If we consider perimeter, 2w plus l is equal to 250, and we can easily isolate l here as 250 minus 2w. This helps us with the area equation because we can now replace l with 250 minus 2w times w, giving us 250w minus 2w squared, or perhaps more traditionally written as negative 2w squared plus 250w. Well this is a quadratic equation. It's basically of the form y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. Our a value is negative 2, our b value is 250, and c is really just 0. I could go straight to graphing this, but let's first start by using p is equal to negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate or the w-coordinate for the vertex. So this is going to give me negative 250 over negative 2 times negative 2, which calculates as 62.5. That's the value of p. Now, to get the q value for the vertex, I could either substitute 62.5 back into this equation here, or I could use what we found earlier, which is that q is equal to c minus ap squared, giving us c, which is 0, minus negative 2 times 62.5 squared, giving me 7812.5. So I know that the vertex is going to be located at 62.5 comma 7812.5. If we're going to graph this, we need to be sure that our viewing window will include the vertex. A standard viewing window just will not suffice. On your calculator, press window to make the changes. And here on Desmos, you go to the wrench icon located in the top right corner for graph settings. Now, we need to change the x-axis. We do not need x going all the way back to negative 10. I do like to have a little bit of space so that I can see the axis nicely. I'm going to go back to negative 5. And on the positive end here, uh, to the right, I'm going to have this go all the way out to 130. That's going to cover at least up to where my vertex is and beyond. On the y-axis, again, we need to get all the way up to at least 7,800, so I suggest we put our minimum at negative 1,000, again, for a little bit of space for viewing, and the maximum value of 8,000. And when I've done that, ta-da, there is the parabola showing quite nicely. So what does the value of the vertex mean on this equation? Well, that's the highest value on the y-axis. That was our maximum. This parabola has a maximum y value of 7812.5. And remember, y was really a stand-in variable for a, the area. The maximum area that Chris can get inside of this corral is 7812.5 square meters. And this will occur when the width of the corral is 62.5, the exact location of this vertex. Now as you change the width to some other value somewhere along the way, you see, of course, that the area is dropping accordingly. And if you increase the width, the area drops accordingly. What if we kept on going? What do the x-intercepts mean? We've got this x-intercept here of 0, 0, and another one here at 125, 0. 
we'll consider what the corral would look like if x, or more properly w, the width, were equal to zero. We'd essentially just be building another 250 meter long section of fence right up against the existing fence. What would the area inside be? Zero. Likewise, if we went to the other extreme and we had a width of 125 meters, we'd be building out here 125 meters, turning around and going straight back another 125 meters, and the area inside, again, zero. So somewhere in between those two dimensions, there's a rectangularly fenced area that's going to maximize the amount of area inside. And in fact, halfway between those two values is where the vertex occurs, since the parabola is symmetric through that vertical axis of symmetry at the vertex. It's got to be halfway between 0, 0 and 125, 0. Now two more things to consider in this question. Normally we've been saying that the domain for our parabolas, for our quadratic functions, is the set of all real numbers. But in this case I don't think that's true. The domain must be the set of all w values such that 0 is less than or equal to w, which is less than or equal to 125 and is an element of the set of real numbers. And our range, of course, must be the set of all areas such that 0 is less than or equal to a, which in turn is less than or equal to 7812.5 and could be any real number value between those two extremes. You can't build a width greater than 125 or less than 0. You can't have negative lengths. And likewise, we will not allow for negative areas to occur inside of this corral. There's another assumption here as well that of course he can use all 250 meters of the fencing material, but of course there would most likely be some leftovers and some waste in there, and he probably couldn't actually build a total length of 250 meters, but we will ignore that issue for now. Well, it's time for me to skedaddle on out of here, but before I go, here's two for you. Question one, graph the equation y equals negative one quarter x squared minus x plus three and identify the following information. Question two, Josh does an amazing forward two and a half somersault dive in a pike position from the three meter springboard. Analyze this equation, as many aspects of it as you can in relation to his dive, much like we just did for Rancher Chris. Well, that's it. It's been a ring-a-ding-dong dandy. Until next time, your pencil sharp, and I'll see you in class.